over the last couple months. And the one thing I started to become recently is I started to become very critical of the company, of the WWE. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times I will sit there and go, what the hell are they doing? That's why my expectations for SummerSlam are not that high mm-hmm. because of what I've seen in the past. But to right. answer your question about this, do I see this being better than WrestleMania? No, not at all. Yeah. I think to me WrestleMania will still be top of the list. I got you. Well, buddy, I do appreciate you, man, coming on and talking to me, man. Like I said, in the future, I'm definitely going to hit you up when it comes to wrestling because – I, I love coming on your show a while back, and I appreciate you coming on my man, to talk. But anytime I have a wrestling talk, I've got to hit you up. I'll bring you on. You have my word on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I just want, to tell, just want to tell your fans where they can, you know, where, where about my show quickly. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no problem. Go ahead. Um, I host the Comeback Wrestling Show. We air every Wednesday night. 9 to 11, we talk basically all things wrestling, AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan, and WWE. You can hear us. We're, you, like I said, we're on Wednesday nights, 9 to 11. And, yeah, you can also catch us on Google Play or iTunes as well. The phone number is on there on one of them. I don't remember which one, but, yeah, it's a fun show. And, have, and Bradley, we're definitely going to have you on again at some point, especially Appreciate close to WrestleMania. Because That's WrestleMania good. is in your, is in your neck of the woods this year. And you know what? Uh, one of the websites, Sean, that I write for has media credentials, and I'm sh- and I already talked to the guy that's in charge, and actually the the company that runs my podcast that we're on right now is the guy that has the credits, and he's automatically going to give me the credits. If I go, I'm going to be super psyched because I love the WWE and the fact that I can go to WrestleMania and I don't got to pay for a ticket. I'm golden for that. I'm all in for that. So I'm hoping that, that happens. Yeah. Believe me, let me know. Let me know if that happens. I will. I'll definitely, definitely, I will definitely have you on. I appreciate that, but I'll be more than happy to come on. All right. Have a good one. And by the way, good job, good job with your show so far. Appreciate that, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Thank that guys, that was John Blaine. Again, he's a Kate Man uh, radio podcaster and writer. Uh, check out his show, guys. Very much, very much worth it. I've been on his show once before, so very, very good show. If you're into wrestling, big wrestling fan. I think I'm being joined by Mr. Rock Riley. Is this Mr. Riley? Yes, it is. How you doing, Bradley? I'm good, sir. How are you? Thank you for joining me this evening. You got it. My pleasure. <laughs> I just want to say... Rock, I did not have the balls. I saw you at the USF games last year and at the spring game this year and did not have the balls to come introduce myself. If you're going to be at FanFest <laughs> Saturday, I'm going to come shake your hand and meet you in person. <laughs> Please do. Please I, do, man. It would be, be my pleasure. I mean, I uh, I will say this, sir. I have I, I started watching you because you're local here in Tampa. I'm a, I'm a Florida native, grew up in the Tampa Bay area my whole life. And I remember watching you on Bay News 9, and I listened to your radio show a few times. And I know, you know, I I just got to start to write for the USF Bulls last year, and I'm getting, and now I'm becoming a huge fan of that that team. And I like what they're doing. And I got, you know, like I said, I saw you in the the booth last year. Um, Speaking of the Bulls, how how are they going to do this year? Do you think Charlie's going to put them in the right position to not do what they did last year? Yeah, I I think that with this new offensive coordinator, Kerwin Bell, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, it is going to be night and day compared to what it was like under Starling Gilbert. I mean, they spread them out. He puts kids in in the best position to use their, their, their speed, their size. They got a really good quarterback in Blake Barnett. He's very, he's very settled now. I mean, last year, Blake Barnett, and, and if those of you that don't know the story of Blake Barnett, he was highly recruited out of California. Nick Saban wanted him. He went to Alabama. He started in the first game, the opener for Alabama. He loses his job to Jalen Hurts. No harm. I mean, Jalen Hurts is really, really good. By the way, Jalen Hurts is going to play in Oklahoma now. How's that going to work out this year? But anyway, he transfers to yeah, he transfers to Arizona State. Doesn't work out there. 
So now he's had two schools that it hasn't worked out. He actually contacted Charlie Strong of USF. It wasn't USF reached out to him. He reached mm-hmm. out to Charlie Strong. They said, okay. He got here. He wasn't even here for the spring game. You can tell he's got a big arm. He's got a wife. He's got a kid. And it was an awful lot last year. But the fact that he's been here all off season, and then this offensive coordinator, Kerwin Bell, they won a national title at Valdosta State. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different ball game. So I think it's going to be an explosive offense. Although their schedule early on is kind of tough, starting with Wisconsin. But I think they're going to put up big numbers this year. Well, I mean, to me, Rock, the, the question with them, you know, last year, I, again, I got to see Blake. I was surprised that he got to start over Brett Key because, again, he wasn't here during the spring game. And Brett, you know, played behind Quentin Flowers for, you know, so many years. And it looked like to me he was going to get the starting job. And then all of a sudden, you know, we hear the announcement that Barnett's the starter. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, well, that's out of the blue. And actually, I think Charlie Strong made the right move because Barnett, you know, proved to be that he was the right decision. I know he got hurt had that shoulder injury, you know, uh, towards the end of the season. I mean, for the most part, though, he uh, he looked pretty good. I mean, I, I like the, the the offense, too. I like the – I like Jordan Cronkite, you know, transferring from Florida. I'm, I'm a Florida Gator fan, too, and, and Bulls. But that was a huge pickup. You know, Johnny Ford, I don't know if Ford's going to be a back, uh, running back because they're going to move him out to wide receiver this year. But right. that was – Great one-two punch last year. You got St. Felix, who's a great wide receiver. And then Mitchell Wilcox comes back. The Bulls right. are loaded on offense. The question with me with them is the defense. Can the defense stop yes. them? Can the defense beat yeah, them? That's no. going to be yeah. this year. Yeah, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And see, the thing about the defense is they kept Brian Jones-Marie, so you don't have a new defensive coordinator. But Strong must like him. So we'll, yeah. we'll see. You know, it's hard in college football because with that first game, like, they don't have a preseason game uh, no. to get ready. You know, right out of the box, man. So, at least it's going to be at Ray J. I'm sure Wisconsin is not going to be used to the and dealing with the heat and humidity that we have here in Tampa Bay. So, that might be in USF's favor. So, But there was a lot more behind the scenes that went on. The players started griping. There was a lot of guys that went into the transfer portal. They wanted them out. There was a lot more that never really got publicized. Guys weren't buying in. They were bitching and complaining and and all this. And why did I come here? And so he kind of got rid of the dead weight. And then he's got his guys that want to be here now. And then with the new offense, I'm telling you, it's totally different. You're not going to see Blake Barnett having to run. Last year with the pocket, when the yeah. protection broke down, he ran no. Uh, offensive coordinator Kerwin Bell is planning on that, where you're not going to have to see that. So, again, it's going to be – it should be fun. It should be fun. They should be fun to watch. What, and I, I think, Rock, too, on defense, with Nico Sautel coming back, that's going to be huge. He's been a huge player for USF, you know, since he's been here. That's going to be huge. Reeves will be another guy that will be big. I mean, yeah. if, they, yeah. if, I mean, if they can – again, they were, like, they were ranked 104th last year in yards per game. Mm-hmm. If they can mm-hmm. fix that, they can cut it in half. I mean, I, I could definitely see USF winning nine games this year at least. I mean, it, it's not an easy schedule. I mean, again, you start off, like you said, I, I'm hoping to be at that game against Wisconsin. That's going to be a tough start for them to have to go up against a big team like that. And I mean, you know, they got to play BYU this year. They, you know, they got to go, you know, they have a, that, that night game in November against Temple, which they blew that lead last year on the road. I, I just, you know, it's going to be interesting. You're right. I think, I, I think there's something special that's going to happen this year at Raymond James team. I really do with them. I see something special with them. I, I don't, and, Kerwin Bell is going to be part of that, but I, I just I see them winning at least nine games this year, at least eight or nine this year. Not like they did last year when they lost the last six, including the bowl game at home. <laughs> right, it was, it was bad. It was bad. And the one last thing I just said: you can tell, you could kind of tell if you were a realist that they were winning, but they were barely winning. They had superior talent over some of these teams. And you're like, wow, how are they barely getting by this? How are they down at the half? And eventually that's going to come back to haunt you and catch up with you. And it did. 
Well, I mean, and, and it's funny that you bring that up because the, the 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 first two games, well, the first game of the season against Elon, they didn't they didn't look all that good. Now the Georgia, <laughs> the Georgia Tech game, they kind of turned the corner. That was the most exciting game I was at last year to see Terrence yeah. Horn you know, set an NCAA record. It was great to see him with all, and then he got hurt, and that kind of hurt them too. But the game against right. UConn, I think, was a perfect example of them playing down to their competition because they should have blown UConn out of the water. It shouldn't even have been a competition. And they let UConn stay in that game all the way to the end, but they won it in the end. And, you know, I, I, that was, to me, I was like, wow. And then the, the, the game against Tulane, they didn't even know like they were even there. Like, they didn't even show up to me. Oh, the Tulane bad. game. That was for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the opener against Wisconsin here. Me too. So, Rock, what do you think about the Bucks? How do you think their season's going to go this yeah. year? Yeah, man. Okay, I have been a big supporter of Arians. I like Bruce Arians. Mm-hmm. I watch, you know, I watch how he operates. Uh, he's on his golf cart. If he feels like he's got to say something, he will. He's not yelling. He's not all over the place. Now, what we have found out, sometimes we don't see. He, The players have told us, if they screw up, oh, he's all over them. Oh, there's, there's, there's some discipline. Like, they don't want to screw up, fearing Bruce Arians. You don't really see that uh, during the practices. It's a little bit different behind the scenes. And I really think that last year, the year before, but especially last year, Dirk Cutter is a good offensive mind. Mm-hmm. He also was a straight shooter. If he had to cut a player, if he had to see he was going to sit a player, he would tell him directly, some of these coaches, they don't even do that. They'll have either the GM, they'll have their position coach. I liked him. He was a good man, but I think he was a little bit too lax. He gave yeah. the players leeway. Deshaun Jackson walked all over him. There were yeah. times where he wouldn't run around. You see it in practice. You come out every practice. Okay, I get it. It's in the NFL. They got the music blasted. They're doing their stretching. But they're losing, and they're losing bad, and you would never know. It was like yeah. they True. just, they almost, yeah. So now that's the biggest difference, like no music, a lot more coaching, teaching. They went mm-hmm. back to fundamentals. You watch Clyde Christensen, who's been a coach for a long time. Hell, he was here back when Dungey was here. But he was mm-hmm. with Peyton Manning at Indy, besides Leftwich. Leftwich is the offensive coordinator, and Jameis likes him because he's young, he played, he played QB, and so they already got a good bond. But Clyde Christensen, you'll be like, he's working these drills with his feet. You know, back, 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 boom, 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 forward, back, 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 ball, ball, turn. And it's like, wow, I've never seen that before. Like, sometimes you think these guys are in the NFL. Yeah, they're the best of the best. But really, in the off season, mini camp OTAs, sometimes you need fundamentals. They weren't yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, tackling practice, they never even had tackling practice under Dirk Cutter. And and uh, Bruce Arians says, "You're damn right, we're going to tackle. That's the only way you get better. You got to get back to that form." So with that, I'm a big believer in Bruce Arians. But when you got Vita Vea, and I know. This is, if this is live, but whenever you're listening to this, if it's after past tonight when we're doing this, we'll have mm-hmm. the latest. You know, the MRI is Friday morning. They had to wait for the swelling. Man, he has been a man beast with in, in next to Ndamukong and Sue in camp. They cannot afford to lose Vita Vea. Now you've got your stud linebacker, Levante David. Yeah, it was only a scope, but still, he had his scope knee surgery during camp, so he's out hoping that he'll be back for game one, maybe game two. So you don't have those two guys. That is, uh, that's going to hurt you a little bit. You know, that's, that's, that's the one thing right now that is concerning me because the defense has looked so much better than what it was under the old Mike Smith. Oh, my God, those guys were so soft. These young guys, they're flying to the ball. They're getting a lot of picks. They're getting their hands on the ball. But that also has helped from Vita Vey and Adama Kitsu up front. Well, speaking of that, so, Rock, what was your opinion on what happened to the whole scenario with Gerald McCoy? Uh, you know what? Here's what happened. The, the new regime comes in, okay, Bruce Arians, and all of those guys either coached under him or played under him. Those were guys 
when he knew he was getting the gig, he started writing. He